In this video, I'm going to show you how to correct skin tones in Final Cut Pro, but I specifically want to do two examples. One where we correct a light skin tone and one where we correct a dark skin tone. Along the way, I'm also going to give you five tips that I think will help you to correct any kind of skin tone. Let's start with a light skin tone and I'm going to hit you with the first tip right off the bat. Color grade the whole shot first and then fix the skin tones. The reason for this is that if you correct your skin tones first and then color grade your shot, your grade will affect the corrections you made to the skin and then you'll have to go back and fix the skin tone again. So let's create a really quick and basic color grade on the shot. By the way, the stock footage that I'm using in this tutorial comes from Artgrid, so if you're looking for high quality stock footage, I'll leave a link in the description down below for you. Okay, let's color grade the shot, and to do that, I'm going to add a color wheels adjustment. When I grade the shot, I'm going to focus on the background and everything that is not her skin, because I'm not too worried about her skin at this point. So I'm gonna start with the white balance. I want to make this shot a little bit cooler since she's in the snow, I wanted to really have that cold feel. So something like that will do. And then I'm going to create a bit more contrast. I'll just drop these shadows down a little bit, boost the highlights and maybe just brighten up the mid-tones slightly. I might also create a bit of a look. So let's bring these shadows down to a bluish aqua kind of color, just to enhance the real cold vibe in these shadows and on her jacket. And the highlights I might just push towards orange just so that we have a little bit of that orange light from the sun coming through there. So this is before and this is after. Now that we have our basic color grade, let's go ahead and correct this light skin tone, which brings me to tip number two. Isolate the skin tones and use the scopes. Let's first bring up the scopes using the shortcut command seven, and then I'm going to hide my browser window using the shortcut control command one. When I'm working with skin tones, I like to set my scopes to this two panel display and I set my one side to a waveform set to Luma, and I'll set the other side to a vector scope. Next, you'll want to isolate the skin tone using the crop tool. You can see that this particular shot was shot in a wider aspect ratio, so we have these black bars on the top and bottom. I can easily fix that by just heading over to my inspector and changing the spatial conform from fit to full. In this case, I'll probably just position the shot a little bit to the left as well. And then to isolate my skin tones, I'll make sure that my crop tool is selected and I can drag these little handles here to just trim and make sure that all I can see is my skin. You can also use the sliders here if you need to. And I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that I've got only her skin showing. I'll also then set this to crop because what that'll do when I hit done is fill the frame with her skin. If you take a look at the vector scope here, you'll notice that the display is quite small. So you can go ahead into these little settings and change the scale to 133%. It just makes it a little bit easier to see where this color is showing up on the vector scope. This line over here is called your skin tone indicator line. And this is where you want your skin tone to lie in terms of color. So in this case, you'll see that the skin tone is not quite on the line. It's looking a little bit purple, a little bit blue. So what we need to do is change the skin tone to line up on that line. So to do that, I'm going to add another color wheels adjustment here. And because my skin tones lie in the mid-tones, I'm going to drag the color here on the mid-tones and I'm going to drag that until it lies on my skin tone indicator line, somewhere around there. I might also brighten the mid-tones just a little bit and I'll probably saturate them a little bit as well just to make her skin pop. So if we have a look at just the skin, this is before looking quite purple, this is after which looks a little bit more natural. Now we obviously want to see this in context of the entire shot, so I'll head back over to my inspector and I'll uncheck the crop. So this is before and this is after. So notice how this affects the entire shot, we're getting some of that yellow in the highlights over here and in the background which we don't want. So that brings me to tip number three, which is to use a color mask to make isolated corrections. To do that, we want to add a mask to this color wheels adjustment, which is the adjustment we made to the skin. So I'll select that and I'm going to add a color mask. Then I've got this eyedropper tool. I can just select her skin. Something about there looks good. You can also view your mask to see what it looks like. All the white areas will be affected. So we will be affecting some of her hair and some of the fur in the hood, but I don't mind that too much. 
If you want to change the mask, you can click on show and you can go ahead and you can adjust some of these parameters like the luma values to really fine tune your mask. Let's take the mask view off and now we can see this is before and after we've corrected our skin. I'll go back to the very beginning and just show you the steps. Here we created the basic grade and there we fixed the skin. That's before and that's after. If you've enjoyed those three tips so far, please hit that like button for me real quick. I'd really appreciate that. So that's it for the light skin tone example. Let's take a look at a dark skin tone example. We have this shot of a woman enjoying the sunshine in Greece. So let's start by doing a quick basic grade. Since it's a bright sunny day and we have all of this white, to me, this white should be almost blown out. So this shot is a little bit too dark. I'm going to raise the global slider here until we have a bit more of an even exposure. And from there, I'm going to boost the highlights until my highlights look right. That to me looks more like there's bright light on these white buildings. And then I'm going to drop the shadows just to get my contrast right. I think something about there looks good. I might also warm this shot up a bit just so that we have a little bit of orange in the background because it is a bright sunny day. Don't worry too much about her skin. I know she looks very orange right now, but we're gonna fix that. If you pay attention just to the background, this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now, which I think is much better. So let's crop into her skin. I'm going to use the crop tool. You can also access it from over here. Set that to crop and hit done. So in this example, I'll show you the second way to do it, which also just so happens to be tip number four, which is to use the HSL curves to make isolated corrections. You can see we are quite orange here on the vector scope and we need to get more onto this line. So I'll add an HSL curves adjustment and then I'm going to select the color picker on my hue versus hue section and I'll select a little range of her skin. So now I'm going to change this orange look of her skin and I'll try and get it to line up on the vector scope a little bit more. So if you have a look at this, as I change it, it moves around on the vector scope. So I'll set that to right about there. That looks like it's right along the skin tone indicator line. It's also incredibly saturated, so I'm going to select the eyedropper on the hue versus saturation, select the same sort of range, and I'm just going to desaturate that a little bit, pull that back, something like that should do, maybe that's a bit much. And then I'm also going to change the hue versus luma, select the same sort of range, and I want to darken this just a little bit. So looking at the skin only, this is before we adjusted the skin, and this is after. Let's have a look at it in context by unchecking the crop properties, this is before we made the adjustments, and this is after. As you can see, her skin looks a lot better. The final tip is to rely on your eye. If you look online, you'll find a ton of different opinions on where skin tone should lie on your scopes, and they'll talk about what IRE values you should aim for. While there is definitely some merit to what is being said about that, I just find that it's not a hard and fast rule. For example, if you're grading a lifestyle commercial, you might be going for a really vibrant, contrasty look where the colors are saturated and everything is bright. Or you might be working on a video that is moody and maybe has a muted, desaturated kind of look. And in both those examples, your skin tone might look best at different levels on the scopes. Also, depending on the color grade you have and the type of look you're going for, it might work in your favor to veer slightly off the skin tone indicator line to get it looking just right. Let's jump back to the second example again. If I look at this and just rely on my eye, it feels like her skin tone is a little bit too red. Yes, she's in the sun and it's a warm shot, but I think I'm going to head back into my HSL curves and just move this slightly away from red to make it a little bit more orange and I'll probably desaturate it a little bit as well. It's a subtle difference I know, but that just looks right to me. If we isolate her skin again just to look at the scopes, you'll see how we are not quite on that line. We've moved a little bit to the left of that skin tone indicator line, but it's still really close. I hope you found those five tips helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on new uploads in the future. And I'll catch you in the next one.